In this video we will see what is the ACPI mechanism and we will cover some advanced configurations that you can apply to your machine and theoretically you can improve the overall performance. First of all we need to understand what is uh, the ACPI. Advanced configuration and power interface is an uh, open standard that operating systems can use to discover and configure computer hardware components to perform power management like putting can use hardware components to sleep, auto configuration, plug and play, and hotspot swapping and status uh, monitoring. We have the ACPI device driver, the driver of Windows, the core driver, the ACPI that sees that manages power and plug and play devices. It loads a startup and acts as a bridge between the operating system and the ACPI BIOS. So, is the connection between the, the OS and your hardware. This driver has tasks like adjusting COM port settings or enabling USB controllers for system wake up. Pressing the power button initiates a shutdown process, allowing the operating system to safely and orderly close without uh, risking hardware damage. This process is managed by ACPI to ensure a smooth and secure shutdown. ACPI, which replaced the older APM and older mechanism, is known for its energy saving features. It works with the operating system to manage power efficient, uh, efficiently by handling different system states processor states, CN power states, and component states, these states. Microsoft Windows 98 second edition was the first operating system to support ACPI. We have some ACPI layers. For instance, ACPI SO uh, represents the normal state of a running computer. ACPI 3 is suspended to RAM. ACPI 5, uh, that we talked about this before is shut down for windows so when you press the power button acpi 5 is shut down for windows is this layer we have the acpi tables the operating systems use these tables to obtain information about the hardware installed we can see the internal procedure of uh, acpi from your hardware lever until uh, your application the tweak is uh, from uh, a user on my server and the concept is to remove those drivers from executing at startup. You can rename them simply. And theoretically, you can improve your latency, actually. It's not so much about the FPS. Here we see how you can apply those configurations. This is the script and the revert file. I also include the ACPI event viewer block. This blocking the event viewer reports of ACPI because when you disable those drivers, event viewer will reporting will get a reporting about uh, this issue about that those drivers didn't execute it. So, uh, in order to to stop this uh, from event viewer, you need to execute this uh, registry, and you can re-enable it by this registry here. Now we are ready to. Uh, move on performance analysis. The conditions are the same. The FPS part, the latency part, the tools that I used, the hardware, the OS and the games. The only change is here. I added some more metrics on my captures with uh, Windows Performance Recorder and this include the analysis. Uh, those metrics are helping, are helping me to uh, understand better what is happening on my system in terms of latency so you can see what they do it's metric to understand later on uh, the graphs let's start with the Fortnite latency the DPCSR execution times for endo scanner actually are the same in both cases but are better by default same for direct scanner same for AMD driver the system latency tolerance is actually the same in both cases, but better by default. In Fortnite executable file, the CPU usage in view is better by default. Same, the CPU weight is better by default. In latency of CS2, the execution times of Fento Scanner at most is better by default, but we can see that the duration fragments average are, is better uh, with ACPI tweaks. 
The Deep Sea Ice are executed sometimes for Dykes Rex Kernel is better again by default. Same thing for AMD driver. The system latency tolerance again is better by default. This CS2 data XE is better uh, by default. Same thing for CPU weight. Now let's move to the FPS part in Fortnite. The FPS are the same at all. Average 1% loss and 0.1% loss are actually the same. We can't say that we have some improvement or worse results. It's actually the same. Frame time just in dev and PC latency is actually the same. Again, we can't say that we see an improvement. In CS2, we follow the same pattern, not any difference in terms of FPS. Yes, we see some reduction in FPS, in average FPS with SCP at tweaks. I don't think so. it's something interesting. It's actually the same. SD frame times and PC latency again are the same in both cases. So we come to the end. Is it worth to use those configurations? My answer is likely not. Uh, it's something very dangerous at all. But it depends on your machine, it depends on your OS, it depends what do you want to achieve. Personally, I'm not gonna use this uh, configuration. Anyway.